So now what we're going to do is start with some more advanced views of the fetal heart. I would emphasize that the starting point for anyone is to make sure that the core screening views are normal and to start with cross-sectional imaging before moving on to any of the more uh, uh, extra modalities that we're looking at here. We suggest is that once the views of the heart are obtained in cross-section and then the use of color may be extremely helpful to confirm the flow into the heart and the uh, flow in the great arteries. So here I've gone back to the four chamber view here and what we're seeing are the symmetrical size of the left and right ventricles, the opening of the tricuspid valve and we are now seeing that the flow into the both the right and left ventricles of the heart. So on the right here we see unaliased flow a broad jet in from the right atrium to the right ventricle and from the left atrium to the left ventricle, we nicely see that there is nothing crossing the ventricular septum here. And on these views, there is no evidence on color flow of regurgitation of either the mitral or of the tricuspid valve. And we will now just apply the color, standard color, and I'll increase the color scale. So the color scale we should adjust depending on whether we're looking at pulmonary veins or looking at AV valve inflow. Here our color scale is around 60, which is appropriate for this, for what we're for interrogating mitral valve, valve inflow. I've placed the cursor just below the mitral valve. And there what we are seeing is the normal biphasic inflow pattern across the mitral valve. You will see here that the E wave, this early phase of filling, is slightly lower velocity than the A wave. Now this can change with gestation as the E wave velocity tends to go up with advancing gestation and the A wave is much more constant with advancing gestational age. So there'll be a more prominent E to A typically in later gestation and rather more dominance of the A wave compared to the E wave in early gestation. But this E velocity less than A is a normal finding during fetal life in contrast to the situation uh, postnatally. When we look at the tricuspid valve inflow signal, we will see the same as we saw or similar to what we saw on the, through the mitral valve we're now trying to get a good fetal position here. And there again we see on the tricuspid inflow signal, we see a similar finding with dominance of the A wave compared to the early E wave, which is normal in the fetal circulation. But we should see that there is a biphasic pattern, meaning both these E and A waves clearly separate across each of the AV valves. To see a single spike of inflow across either one of the AV valves in the normal fetal heart uh, is, is something which should raise concerns that there may be an underlying either structural or functional problem affecting the fetal heart. Also, we see here, which has caused some uh, diagnostic confusion, with the more high resolution equipment is that you can see beside the descending aorta a very, a very, very small vessel sitting alongside in here, just there beside the descending aorta. This is in fact the normal azagous vein. And this is, should not is give, give uh, uh, concern this is a normal finding in the fetal heart, and we can see it just more clearly because of the high resolution. Of note, though, is that you see a vessel, a vein lying in this position, should be tiny by comparison with the size of the descending aorta. If you see a vessel sitting in this position here, which is as big as the, as the descending aorta, or almost as big, it would give, make you suspicious that 
the inferior vena cava may be interrupted and that flow above the diaphragm may be via the azygous vein.